Hey, we're out at the Americana Theater with uh, CJ Newsom out here talking about your show that you have. What's the official name of the show? Yeah, it's Classic Country's Patsy Klein and Friends. Do you do any Patsy Klein music in it? <laughs> uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> That'd be hilarious, wouldn't it? Like, don't do any of it. <laughs> yeah, the, that would be crazy, though. Yeah, I told uh, Daryl Croy that does the uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. I right. said you should have people out and just say, uh, you know, it's uh, Daryl Cro- Daryl Croy with uh, Jerry Lewis, and do just Jerry Lewis stuff, not Jerry Jerry Lee Lewis, but just <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> like Nutty Professor, just nice. stand up there and, and do that the whole time. So nice. He's like ninety years old now. Who? Jerry Lee Lewis? Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Crazy. I don't follow Sorry, him, that's but... off the off the subject. Yeah, whatever. So <laughs> so he's not one of the friends in the show that you have going on. What how many friends do you have in the show? <laughs> well, um I do when I when I talk about the friends, I do like classic country. I do some Loretta Lynn, Reba, Dolly Parton mm-hmm. and then the guys, our band, they'll sing like Johnny Cash and George Jones. So they do country. Do they also do Western? Because I'm not much for this music. Thing. Yeah. They do, they yeah. do both. <laughs> <laughs> I had never listened to country music before I moved to Branson, to tell you the truth. Okay. So, yeah, and this is a whole so, new world for you. It is a whole new world. <laughs> Don't so, sing about it, though. Uh, no, no. <laughs> but you do the old school country stuff, not the new kind of poppy. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys yeah. do that? I, like the... n- no, we don't, actually. I mean, we we dabbled in it before, and and. Who knows what what the future will bring? You know, it, it sort of depends on uh, what demographic ends up coming to our show. But mm-hmm. thus far, uh, yeah, we're just uh, oldies. But and that has to do with my raising. Actually, my my folks raised me on that. Really? Generation Let's talk music. about that. Yeah. Like, where where did you grow up? In the area. In the in, area. Um, right here around the theater? Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> you got a little place out here behind the dumpster? Yeah, a tent, yeah. <laughs> no, um, I graduated from Rogersville, which is about 20 miles east of Springfield. Uh-huh. Um, and we spent our summers and our weekends here in Branson. So um, I, I pretty well, you know, my, my, my first show was Roy Clark. I mean, like, so I've been in Branson and, and been a part of the community for Quite some time, actually. Yeah. So, and, so you knew what it was. I had no idea. Oh when yeah. I moved yeah, in. I knew what I was getting into. I thought it was owned by Richard Branson. <laughs> oh wow. Seriously. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think that was probably a common thing. People probably yeah, yeah. thought that because I knew who he was. I had never heard of Branson, Missouri, and so somebody said, "No, that's where Grandma goes." You know, once a year, and I go where she buys those terrible shirts because she would <laughs> come back at these tie dye things, and we would hide them. No. We, we didn't know this was your shirt. We're washing the car with it. You know, like stuff like that. Nice, so, mm-hmm. nice. I'm sure she appreciated that. Yeah, right, right. So we had no idea what it was, but you grew up right here in the area, so you probably grew up going to Silver Dollar City. And, uh-huh. and, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it, it's funny. I don't know if it just happens whenever you grow up in the area or not, but Branson kind of became home. Uh-huh. Um, it just. It felt like home all these time. I mean, like um, I was, I was adopted, and my folks were already retired when they adopted me as a baby. Oh, well, that and, must have been an interesting, yeah. Upbringing. I mean, like they were, you know, fifty, sixty years old when you uh, were when you were when really I was little, a little baby. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I got interested in older country. I mean, older country. <laughs> you didn't have you know. a choice, really. Exactly. Well, you know, and. Uh-huh. The funny part is, I love music so much, it didn't really matter. It's one of those things where music is music, and, and good music especially. Um, you just sort of uh, gravitate towards things, mm-hmm. basically. I mean, like, for instance, I noticed every time that I sang Patsy Klein music, people really liked it. Yeah. I mean, like, I got what I call an introductory clap most every time I started to sing her music. And so I ended up gravitating towards it and finding wow she's got some really great stuff mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know so yeah and a lot of that's coming back around because we've been talking with uh, amber and matt with the 60s and 50s show and barry williams a while back and all of that music the older music is coming back in the kids movies and stuff now yeah in your uh, you know all of your kung fu pandas and your uh, whatever they have going on toy stories and all that stuff but it's all coming back so so your demographic are you getting like a younger audience now compared to what you yeah, did? Yeah. I mean, How we, long have you been doing the show, first of all? Well, this is four years now. Four years. This will be four years. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just keep moving on up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, it's, been, it's been great. This, this is exactly what I wanted to do. In fact, uh, Americana, especially with Matt and Amber, I mean, great people to work for. Uh, we've really been having a great time. Yeah. 
Yeah. So exactly how did you get into doing a show? So what did you want to do when you were younger? Okay, so you have these older older parents, yeah. right? What did you want to do when you were little? Well, uh, as general as it may sound, I wanted to be a singer. I didn't exactly know what that meant. Uh-huh. Uh, I was it thinking... means singing songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, In case you don't know. You know, it's like, unfortunately, with the artistic side of it, you, you don't know exactly where to aim. You know, it's like, right. should I aim for this? Should I aim for... I mean, because for a long time, I did. I wanted to go to Nashville because I'm like, you know, that's They do country I, I music there. Yeah. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I met my husband, Chris. Uh-huh. And, uh, did, he, my, did he do a trick for you? He Is did, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he's a magician, too. Yeah. Yeah, and you're right. You so he stole he my something. heart. Doing a trick. Yeah. yeah. See, uh, whenever I used to uh, take somebody out, I wouldn't do a trick for the long... They'd be, finally, after like several months, they're like, you know how to do magic? I'm like, Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> so great. Like, yeah, right. yeah. No, actually, what what won me over was his sense of humor yeah. first, first and foremost. But yeah, he he play and, and do vanishes all the time. And mm-hmm. magic, yeah. So I did love that aspect of it. But once we got married, and uh, I figured out Branson was the place to settle, not yeah. Nashville. Right, right. <laughs> you know, and uh, I was a part of a show, uh, part of different shows uh, throughout the years. I I did uh, a tribute to John. Dim- well, I didn't do a tribute to John Denver. That'd be but- awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> I was a female singer, you know, mm-hmm. uh, which featured some Peter, Paul, and Mary and some other great stuff. And I did that for seven years and uh, just doing little odds and ends. And the weird part is um, we were sitting in the Americana Theater uh, watching another show. And my husband leaned over to me and he said, you know, you can do this. You can have your own show. Uh-huh. Was it that it was a really bad show? Because <laughs> I've been at things that somebody would be like, lean over and be like, Dude, you could so do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Was it that tone of voice? Or, <laughs> you, you know, know, the weird part is I don't even remember the show at the <laughs> that would, time, so be funny, that's, that's good it? for all, Because right? I get that at all. I get that all the time. We'll just be out at something and be like, God, look at that painting. My kids could do that. <laughs> No, but so so he tells you that you yeah. you could do and that. So I hopefully thought, that's a compliment yeah. at this point. Well, yeah. I mean, it, he he believed in me, and uh-huh. you know I do too. But it it's it's a lot of work to put a show together and uh-huh. and to get it off the ground. And the amazing part is with his business sense and um, my talent and my passion for it. You know, we we've been very successful. It's been really yeah. great. Yeah. Do you ever have to go and help with the magic show? Uh, yes. In fact, I've worked the magic shop for years. Have you really? Oh my gosh. Uh, we had, we used to have the one over in the IMAX. Oh, I remember that. And yeah. my daughter learned how to walk in the IMAX. Yeah. I mean, like it, she, we were there just all the time. Cause I owned a chain of magic shops. Oh, uh, did yeah. you? Yeah. Before I moved to Branson, we had little ones, uh, we had several locations. We had them in malls and we had standalone shops and my daughter did the same thing. Like we had a little, the little jumpy thing hooked yeah. on the door in the magic shop and mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so she it's would like, go and sit with me at the second. mall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I even rigged up a thing so that she could sit in this little pouch, you know, oh, cool. uh, because we didn't have one one day. So I rigged up a scarf. So she was riding around <laughs> with me. And, nice. And uh, yeah, so, uh, but the one over at Silver Dollar City, that's been there forever. Yeah, we had the one at Silver Dollar City and Celebration City too. I remember that one. That was a cool one. Oh, yeah. Was, I miss we, Celebration We had a City. huge shop to play with. I mean, we put Sub Trunk and all sorts of great, yeah, yeah. you know, things in it. So Yeah, but I, I miss, don't you miss Celebration City? We used to go there yeah. almost every night, my daughter and I. We'd go and we'd eat. We had a favorite spot. And then we would watch the fireworks almost every night. And we could see the fireworks from our house, too. But, uh, yeah, I miss it. Yeah, and actually, uh, come to think of it, yeah, that's, that's been forever ago. Jeez. Uh, back when Sean Paul and Julianne had their mm-hmm. show, we were there. With the monkey? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we were their substitute. Like, we, they'd take one day off, and we'd do the illusion show. Uh-huh. We didn't have any monkeys or anything. Yeah, I love that little monkey. Oh, Frankie? Frankie, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. A few years ago, somebody got in touch with me, and they said, uh, hey, we have a monkey. And we thought you might be interested in getting this monkey. I'm like, oh, no. Uh, no cause... I had a friend that had a monkey, and that thing lives, like, for two or three years. No. <laughs> <It> lives... <laughs> well, they're highly forever. dependent. Yeah, I... because they wear diapers all the time. you got to change them, like, every hour. Well, like, I have constantly. a kid. You've got a monkey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, okay. that's, that's Are there monkeys lot. in your show? No. Is that one well, of your friends? the guys are kind of, they do act like monkeys. Oh, well, that's going to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little plug for them. Are you talking about the band? Or are you talking the, about yes. Terry? Yes. Yes. Know, a little bit of all of them. <laughs> and, you know, we have a, a six-piece band, and mm-hmm. I call them the recliners. 
Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it, instead of the decliner. <laughs> <laughs> True. I guess that that's better than that. Yeah. Yeah. I guess eventually, so. I want to like have a billboard with the guys all sitting in recliners. Oh yeah. And me singing in the cent- eventually. And Terry this. could be your decline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you inclined to come see us? Oh, you know? look at this! You got it all. I, I, that's very been, punny. Yeah. I gave it some thought. You know. <laughs> not a lot. Not, not a lot. A lot but... You heard one, and, and your husband was like, "You know, you could do that." <laughs> So you went to see a comedian. <laughs> you know, you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, we hired one. Yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> so you got six pieces there. A six piece band. Which are all like trumpet. They uh, all play the trumpet. <laughs> that would be funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that'd be a little yeah. distracting, I think. Yeah. Uh, no, we, uh, our lead guitarist, Josh Carroll. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have an upright bass, Forrest Herzog. That's hard to say. It, yeah. It's a mouthful, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, our drummer is Andy Corcoran. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we've got uh, a couple utility players. Uh, utility players? What's that like? <laughs> <laughs> like, like water and power? <laughs> <laughs> this guy over here, he's just checking the plumbing. He's one of the utility <laughs> utility players. Yeah, you know, I never really thought about it like works, that. Or, you um, find, like Monopoly here? What's this story? <laughs> well, that's what musicians call themselves. It's not a, it's not a derogatory term or oh, anything. Oh, it's not? No. It sounds be- really derogatory. <laughs> it's like they went to a show and their wife was like, you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, when I when I laugh really hard, I cry. Um, anyhow, um, no. So they play more than one instrument. Is, oh, I see. Is what that means. I see. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> George Geyser, uh, he plays steel, fiddle, harmonica, mandolin, and guitar. Mm-hmm. He's just oh, ever so slightly talented. Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually, he has his own show, too. Uh, he does uh, a tribute to George Jones. Oh, okay. So, uh, side note. Uh, and then... Uh, he, he, was he the guy with the uh, the uh, colony, the Kool-Aid they had to drink? No, that was Jim Jones. Never mind. That's a whole different... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a very a weird <laughs> hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> yeah, uh, that'd be an enti- entirely different show. <laughs> would be, it would yeah, be. Terrible. Um, and we have a piano player, uh, JT Lynn, and then uh, our other piano player, he, he lays strings and synthesizer and bass, and mm-hmm. then he does play trumpet, he plays flute, l- l- lute, the saxophone, lute? <laughs> no. <The> lute? <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> So like the other cast, Amber and Matt do a 60s show. You do a 1360s show. We're going to play the lute. <laughs> and then we're going to try some witches. <laughs> Let's see if she can breathe underwater. <laughs> I always get confused. It's a clarinet. I'm sorry. Oh, the flute, wait, the no. Clarinet wait, the... a clarinet is entirely different than a lute. Isn't a lute like a little tiny guitar thing? Is that What is that thing? What is that little... That's a uke. Ukulele. Uh, what? No. no, I think... <laughs> Have you okay, done you a know, show I, before? Have I you? sing. I don't play instruments. Do you play any instruments? Well, I play guitar a little bit, but nothing compared to my band members. I have a terrible guitar story. We went to a really fancy uh, sushi restaurant one time, and obviously they had it set up so on busy nights they would have like a little trio playing for the people in the lobby, and it was very nice. Mm-hmm. And I just made a comment to a girl that I was first date, and I said, I wonder if I could play that guitar. And the, the hostess said, you're welcome to. We welcome people. To, to give it a shot. So I got up and strummed away, and the horrific looks on people's faces, and they go, nope, I can't play that guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and the look on her face. Wow. She's like, you should have played the lute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe it flute, is some the, sort of a small guitar. I don't, I don't know. I really is. don't know. So the, the utility players always have <laughs> those. <laughs> so I'll ask the gas man when he's out. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. I have no jokes about the electric guy, so I'm sorry. I know. Yeah. Shocking, isn't it? <laughs> so, so, you you yeah. surprise yourself sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you have the band. I have the band. <clears throat> yeah. And then we just and added... You're crying like mad. Already. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's Niagara like Falls. Of... There's a bunch of subway <laughs> napkins there. <laughs> Only the best here. Well, but this is this is good because it's internet and they can't tell. Yeah. Well, there's a secret hidden camera. Oh, so. <laughs> great. Not out here. It's in the restroom. So. Oh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so you have these six guys. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then we, just this year, like we've been doing this show for four years, but just this year we had a huge request for a comedian. And mm-hmm. so we got a uh, four-time comedian of the year, Terry Sanders. Really? Uh, four times. Which times were those? Uh, one, two, three, and four. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. In years past. And I so what know. does he play? Instrument-wise, <laughs> he doesn't 
play an instrument. Is he a utility comedian? <laughs> does he? Does He's he probably just... an impressionist comedian. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I would go with because he does. He plays a lot of different characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what's your impression of Terry? Though? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but good. Oh, that's good. Nothing but good. That's always nice. Yeah, I mean, he's super sweet. I've known him for a really long time. Actually, mm-hmm. he's been out he of Silver at, Dollar he City. Works at Silver Dollar City. He's, yeah, was there? He's been there for thirty-seven years. Really? Yeah, like an insane amount of time. Like as that long is a as long a marriage. Time. You know. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, so I've known him ever since I was a little tot. Did you um, see him when you would visit? Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh, I do actually. I mean, I yeah. remember just as clear as day. In fact, when I was younger, he was on billboards going up the highway mm-hmm. and I can still see the picture. I mean, in my, in my mind, like he, he was, you know, a lot younger then. <laughs> uh, so was I. What are you trying to say? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was this picture of this dog licking his face. Do you? Like, like the dog was licking its own face? No, no, <laughs> no. The dog was licking Terry's face. Okay. And it was sort of, I don't know what it was exactly. If it was just sort of an invi- invitational, it, like, everybody. It wasn't welcome. for a show or anything. <laughs> Terry just bought it, this. She's like, look, this dog licked my face. <laughs> it was either advertising silver. Yeah, it was advertising silver. Or shipper. hygiene. Shipper. It could have been <laughs> any of those things. <laughs> I don't know, but I, there's certain things that stick in your mind, and that's, his face. I don't know, that's what... That's what you remember. Well... Terry, yeah, when I first yeah. saw you, <laughs> my fondest memory was somebody, not even a, somebody, something licking your face. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of Terry Sanders, I think of... <laughs> Never mind. Oh, my word. What? You need to make the tears any worse. I mean, really. <laughs> that's, that's really funny. <laughs> well, I say at my show, if they're crying or laughing, I don't care. It's a, it's a reaction, right? Right, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So as long as you get a reaction, so well, and he definitely does get a reaction. Does I mean, he? Not just from me, but do from people me lick his face after the show? <laughs> just your loot player. <laughs> He's like, we're utility. We do a little bit of everything. <laughs> it's our job. If I come to the show, I'm bringing a dog. Just so you know. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit there with a dog on my lap and just stare at Terry the entire time. <laughs> Be like, remember this? I'm gonna take you back. <laughs> <laughs> that's great so, I, that's terrible yeah so it's I don't terrible. Know. this show sounds amazing you well, got loots you got <laughs> <laughs> recipient of dog licking you got and that's 20 minutes of the show it's just terry sitting there <laughs> bring your pets not only do we have pet friendly uh hotels here in branson we but have parks shows and shows yeah, just yeah. bring the dog out so yeah yeah but, you never know what to expect <laughs> apparently not <laughs> So, okay, so people show up to this show at the Americana. Yes. Which is, uh, when is it? When is the show exactly? Uh, we do three nights a week. We do Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday nights uh-huh. at 7.30. 7.30 a.m. is, no. that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. I would have to get mm-hmm. up at like four to warm my voice up. So really, do you do that? Uh, not now. I don't. No. But no. I, the first year of our show, we had a morning show, uh-huh. and I, I did. Is it terrible? It was. It was awful. I yeah, because I don't think we get a lot of morning people. No, and you know, it's uh, it's definitely we didn't have any advertisement or marketing ahead of us that year, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a lot of footwork because I went out to the hotels and I, I would pass out the rack cards and mm. information to people and stuff. And we'd have like audiences of two, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, a comedian came to town that I really liked. Um, he's a famous comedian, had an HBO special. I remember when I was little uh, seeing him, uh, but he had cats licking his face. It was a whole different thing. But he came to Branson. <laughs> And he was huge. And then we went to his show, and there were four people at his show. Oh, my gosh. And I asked him about it, and he said, one night I had two two people in the audience. And it was just advertising. It's so hard to advertise. He said, I felt weird. So I said to them, I'll take you out to eat. Like, I'll take you. You already paid for the ticket. I'm not refunding your money. Tough. Uh, no, no. He refunded <laughs> it. <laughs> but they went out to eat and hung out the whole night, and he took them out for it. You know, he's like, I'll do the show for you if you want. But or we can go out and we can just have a conversation, have a good time. Well, how cool is that? Yeah, I thought that was cool. But my point is that here in Branson, no matter how big you are, it's tough. There's a lot of shows. We got like a dozen shows in this town. Or more. Yeah. (laughs) And um, and they're all like utility shows. So they do a little bit of everything. (laughs) I'm not gonna get over that one, am I? You're not, no. no. I will never ever let that go <laughs> just so you know uh but they uh but my point is there's so many shows and no matter how good you are you know uh who uh willie nelson was came to town right yeah you remember that yeah and that didn't work out and uh we've had big big name nelly 
came to town. Do you remember that? Yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah, yeah. and I, I don't mean to keep focusing on country music, but he had uh, country grammar, right? Yeah. Was that one of his songs? <laughs> uh, but it doesn't matter because advertising is tough here. So, no. But now your show's doing good, right? Yeah, and actually the one thing that I've learned that works in Branson is music and comedy. If you can combine it yeah. in some way. Because when really you're singing, kind of I laugh. And laugh. <laughs> so, Hopefully, I don't have that effect on. Because my wife's like, Dude, you could do that. <laughs> you could, uh, here's a guitar. Go up there. Um, no, but it does work. You know what works in Branson, in my opinion, is variety. Because yeah. even within a couple, you get a guy that really uh, doesn't want to sit for all the music. Uh, the wife enjoys the music, but the guy needs something. You have to break up the show. Yeah. You know, people come to me and they're like, oh, have you ever thought of doing your whole show? And I'm like, yeah, I think it'll be terrible because I can't imagine somebody wanting to sit and watch me for that long. I said, the only way I would do it is to do an Andy Williams type of variety show, which is mm. what I'm doing now where you host it and you get to do little bits here and there and it's stuff. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect for what I want to do. I don't want to do the whole show because then if you get bad reviews... They they don't like you, which well, I'm used to that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, people but, try to compliment you and say, "Oh, you should do your own show," but mm-hmm. no, my gosh, that's so much pressure. It is you so know? much pressure. I mean, that's the thing I love about how, like first year, first three years, it was it was me and the band, and my husband emceed the show, and he mm-hmm. did a little did bit of comedy. Magic? Did he do the magic? He did some magic. He did some comedy throughout the deal, like. Um, uh, Slush powder, you know, bandana, yeah. banana, just some oh, real really? yeah. basic stuff, you know. Uh-huh. Um, but it's hard, you know. There's a lot of pressure whenever you just have so many things to look at. Right. You know, and now with Terry, there's there's a lot to look at. There is a lot to look at. <laughs> he, it, well, he does. He has does several characters. Does he still dress characters. up as a woman? Does yeah. Does he dress up oh, as yeah. a woman in your show? Uh, he, multiple women, actually. Not just Joe. Really? All at the same time? Well, that, that would be... <laughs> Well, that would no. be quite a show. Yeah, that would be. That would mm-hmm. be interesting. No, mm-hmm. uh, he, uh, he, he's become most well-known for the for the Joan Rivers deal that he, he does. Right. Yeah. And I think I've he looks it. better than Joan Rivers did. Now? At, at the, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm sure. What's beautiful is that he's adapted that to work even now, too. You know? Yeah, I, mean, I can't because do that. I can't dress as, I dress as a woman if I drag race. But that's about it. I can't. I can't picture you as a woman. No, no not no. anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't do it. No, yeah. I just can't do it. I can't. Well, I don't. Look it's good. amazing because when I'm standing there performing with him, you don't think, "Oh, this is a man beside me or a w- woman." I mean, he's. What are you trying to say? He's good. I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> he's he, that good. He's that good, and it's that natural. Because so far, I'm getting that you enjoy when he's having his face licked, and <laughs> <laughs> that you, when you see him, you're like, "I can't picture you as a man." <laughs> Oh, dear <laughs> so, Lord. He's okay, gonna love not, this. Not, not Wait till at all. he does the rebuttal. Not, not at all. Oh, I'm, oh gosh, I'm in trouble. I think I'm probably in trouble. if he listens to this. I don't know what he does. But. Uh, trust me, he'll listen. To it, does he? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll yeah, share. A lot it with of him people and... listen to this. Oh, You'd be man. surprised. We, I have a special deal with GoDaddy because my um, my father in law helped the guy that founded GoDaddy. Oh, wow. He he employed him when he came back from Vietnam. It's a long story. It's quoted in the guy's book now. He, he wrote a chapter about my father-in-law uh, where he uh, came back from Vietnam and my father-in-law employed him when no one else would. Oh, wow. And so he had let him pay for his schooling about computers and stuff and he founded GoDaddy. And so now nice. we have like a special relationship with them. So we get all these cool uh, stats and stuff from them. That's and amazing. it's cool. And so we get 700,000 people that listen to these things. Did you know that? That's huge. 700,000 yeah. people are now listening to you talk about your, your show. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's so, see if we can entertain them somehow. Uh, yeah, so we yeah. get a lot. So we got a special deal. So what we do is we do these podcasts, and we don't charge anybody. That's all free. And so we like to promote things that we like. That's and, really great. And we like your show. And we you. like the, the magic that your husband does. And I go hang out at the, uh, what's it called? The Magic Barn? Uh, uh, the, the, the Mortimer's barn. Magic Box. Magic Box. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That's been there. I mean, ever since the park was there, we've we've owned it now for about eight or nine years, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a blast. We love is it. it really a blast? Yeah. Because I I sell some small magic stuff, just touristy type stuff, you know, and uh, and it's interesting because I don't, uh, I don't know. I mean, we we really get into it. Eighteen, nineteen hundred themed. Um, you that's could, fun. You can you can just be your own little character out there. It's, yeah. it's just kind of I used to do, uh, um, what do you call those, renaissance festivals mm-hmm. as a magician. And so I did an escape act as a magician, mm-hmm. you know. And so I would do an underwater escape act, but all I would do is have a, a bucket that was filled with water and just put my head in. I said, essentially, it's the same as me being in water, and water was very valuable during the renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> so 
we don't want to waste the water. So I just put my head in the bucket. It's very resourceful. Yeah, yeah, you have to think about it that way. <laughs> but you've been around magic. What's your least favorite magic trick? You know, the funny part is, I really don't like magic. Like, I hate it. I like the beautiful. I love the slight. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the sponge ball, fool me. You know, yeah, I yeah. love that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know my least, my least favorite act. My what does your husband do that you hate the most? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> you know, no, what do you just see in general? Because I don't like to see magic shows. I think they're a magic. Wait, we were just talking about variety. If I go and see a magic show, I get bored. Because I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, Jerry Seinfeld does this thing where a magician is just somebody trying to show off, look what I can do and you can't figure out. And I get sick of that yeah. after about 20 minutes. I'm like, great, great, great. Okay, do something else. It has to be a variety show. So, I agree. Uh, it's more so. about the entertainment value. I mean, I've, I've told a lot of people that magic is a really hard thing to pull off mm. because you're up there and, and really essentially all you've got is moving the prop into place and ta-da. Yeah. Okay. Me, I get to sing and I can move around. I can do lots of things. I, yeah, right. I have it easier than a magician does. So, I mean, I, you got to give them props for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, my least favorite routine of all would probably actually be linking rings. Really? I actually don't like linking rings at all. Now, I have seen magicians do incredible things with yeah. them where I'm like, oh, okay, now I've got res my respect back for yeah, them. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, I do a redneck magician. I have a character that I travel with called the redneck magician from mm. Branson. And I do linking uh, barbed wire. So we have barbed wire rings and they end up getting caught on me and snagging my clothes. And, that's awesome. Uh, but I agree. You know, the linking rings, that's a funny one because years ago when I first appeared at the Magic Castle, I had a guy that said uh, that he liked my style because it's not about the trick. It's The trick is a side, you know, so many yeah. magicians... The audience sits there and try to tries to figure it out. Like it's a challenge. Like yeah. you know, it's a puzzle. And he said, with your act, the magic just happens when you don't expect it, and it makes sense for the story. He goes, for example, linking rings. He says, once you link them and you unlink them, the trick is over. Everything else is just wasting time. Yeah. So yeah, well, that's good. Yeah, well, that's neat. So I, uh, I definitely married into magic. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not. I mean, I, I like magic, but like I said, it's it's not it's not my thing. Yeah. You know. Your thing. Which is odd because I worked the shop for years yeah. and that was well, just that's different, lots of fun. <laughs> what uh, was that little? <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Well, let me hold my enthusiasm down. Mm. Um, but yeah. no, uh, I'm I'm really excited to be doing what, what we're doing now. You're doing what you're doing now. And you got uh, the show. I mean, you get to, isn't it cool that we get to do what oh. we dreamed about when we were kids? Oh, my gosh. And, you know, people say a lot about touring, but, I mean, with children – Touring mm -hmm. and all the traveling, no, not fun. Do you I do mean, it? Uh, a little bit, but you know, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta eat somehow. <laughs> yeah. Do you have kids? I do. I yeah. have two kids. Yeah. Uh, I have a five-year-old girl and a three-year-old boy. Wow. I have two. I have a twelve-month-old and a fourteen-month-old. So. <laughs> I don't mean to confuse you. Okay. No. no, I have twins. They're oh. four. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have mm -hmm. twins. I do. I did not know that. Which would be perfect in magic if they were identical, but they're not. Oh. Even though one's a boy and one's a girl, we have this girl. discussion all the time. Uh, because I, I mention it in the show. I have a boy and a girl. And people come out, so are they identical? Um, no. There's a couple a differences. A yeah, but people be. still insist. I have somebody that I work with that <laughs> insists that they could still be identical twins. So I'm going to... Get him a little pamphlet as to why. <laughs> <laughs> so why that could not be. The you ever going to have him in, in the show? Uh, no, probably not. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't. I don't like doing that. Mm -mm. I mean, now, granted, my little boy is a singer. He loves to sing, mm -hmm. and my little girl is a character. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to do that, you know, because yeah, it becomes all about them, and then. All of a sudden, people expect it, and da 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 da. da yeah, like... I think uh, there are some really entertaining kids in town, but uh, some shows I've been to, I don't think any that are currently running. Uh, the kid would come out, and you just felt obligated to clap for the kid, even though they didn't even do anything. In the one show, she just came out and did nothing, well, and it was just I... very odd. No, I do work references into the about them. Yeah, and I even have a little videotape segment, but that's something that. People are like, that's so cute how they do that every day. No, it took me two weeks to get them to do that. Oh. A lot of editing to get yeah. them to say what I wanted them to say for a 10-second thing. Well, and you can't depend on them. You know, they get in front of a can't different audience. It's kids. like, no. Uh, well, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> well, is this what you're saying? You're saying you can't depend upon my kids? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, well, you know, yeah. um, not what I meant, but... yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> no, that's not nice. They've seen the show. I remember leaning over at one point to my daughter going, Cassie, 
You're three, but you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. it's funny because Caitlin, my, my daughter Caitlin, she wants to be in my show. And mm-hmm. she's like, but I'm too scared to be in front of people. That's a problem. And I'm like, well, and see, that's why you're not in front of people, yeah. you know. Yeah. And But I mean, I can remember feeling the same way when I was a pup. And my mom said, no, no, when you're you not. A, wait, you wait, go. wait, wait. When you were a pup. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was Terry Sanders there? Oh, <laughs> Everything comes back around, just so you know. So uh, I thought that was somebody's phone vibrating or something. Uh, no, I think is it's a your, tornado. Your stomach? Uh, what in the world? I don't know what that is, but that's crazy. No, but um, I think it's a jet landing. So. <laughs> Somebody rehearsing something. Yeah. So it's your utility band. Those are the, those are the lutes. That's what they sound like. Oh, God. But real quick, as we wind up, I always like to ask uh, what you do with your family when you have free time. What do you enjoy about Branson? Give me three or four things that you would recommend to our tourists that listen to this that they might not know about. Um, well, Other than like Silver Dollar, because you're out there working. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, uh, actually, Magic I, Crate or I don't work out there uh, very often anymore, actually, with the show. It mm-hmm. pretty well. We, Wouldn't it be weird to, like, to go out there? Uh, yeah. I don't know. It, I, it's, it's funny because you get sort of double glances because mm-hmm. people don't really know you. You yeah. change one thing about it. And well, when I here. first moved, when the landing first opened, they asked me to do some of the, they used to have the street performers. I don't know if they still do or not. Yeah. Um, but they asked me, would you come down? I'm like, sure. I live right there. So I'd go down for an hour. And then people would come up and say, oh, we saw you at the showboat. Uh, so you work down here on the corner too? <laughs> <laughs> it was just a weird feeling. Yeah. 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 I, I don't get that so much because people don't really recognize me. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, Silver Dollar City, obviously, is, yeah. a, is a great deal. I don't know what it is about the Ozarks exactly, but it just has a, a homey feel to it. I love the Ozarks because of the hospitality and the people that are here. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it, it, but, you, there, but you got time with the kids. Where are you going to take Yeah, them? you know, there are hidden gyms everywhere, and uh, being a local part of Branson is a huge benefit, of course, because, you know, we get into a lot of destinations at a discounted rate. Right. You know, and uh, the kids have a blast at, you know, Dixie Stampede. Oh, we love Dixie just, Stampede. Just all this stuff, you know, the the zoo. I mean, there's just, there's entertainment everywhere, mm-hmm. you know. There's a lot of things people don't, uh, they don't know about. Well, for, I mean, for like my husband, um, our his family lives down in Texas. Like a lot of his family lives down in Houston. And he said, it's weird. We go down to Houston and after four or five days, we're bored. Yeah. And Branson really does have a lot to offer. Um, mm-hmm. You know what has a lot to offer? Your show. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Yes. I agree. I'm you a got uh, cross-dressing. So <laughs> you got, uh, and that's the band. You, and then, they don't like to talk about that. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> no, but you got the band, multi-talented yeah. utility band. You have the ever-amazing Terry Sanders. I've yes. always been a fan of Terry's. I you really have? have. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah. That's when good. I first moved here, I saw him on the uh, Vacation Channel, which uh, was pretty cool. Yeah. And then uh, I've seen him in several things, actually. Well, he's a great guy, and um, our personalities really, really click and work well mm-hmm. together. Yeah, that's good. We've been having a blast. And, I mean, I'm getting to do exactly what I love to do. I sing all of Patsy's hits. I tell the people a lot of the stories around her life, get them a little bit more familiar with who she was as right. an artist, because it's been a while now. Mm-hmm. You know, we started. We ended up starting our show on the 50th anniversary of her passing. Mm. And uh, fifty, really? Fifty. I did it, not it's know been that. fifty-four years now, actually, oh. since she's passed. I tell people that she's sort of the female version of Elvis. Oh, you know, her music has lasted this long. Yeah, that's I mean, incredible. It's incredibly actually. classic. So, mm-hmm. you know, I want the younger people to to still know it. And well, there you go. I'm going to do my part. And you should come out to the show. Yes. Yeah, at the Americana. Americana Theater. And we'll so- put a little link to the uh, website and all that stuff. And, well, thanks for talking with us. It's been very, very interesting. Me. So I it. we'll go ahead and start recording now. And uh, uh, was this on? Oh, this was on the whole time. All right, I, so I, I guess hope. we got that. <laughs> the look on your face was just classic. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah, you very much. We'll appreciate that at home. But thank you very much for talking with us. And we're out here with uh, CJ Newsom out at the Americana Theater. So that was great. Thanks for listening to All Things Branson. And keep listening for all the latest news here in Branson, Missouri. Bye-bye.